Talking Music with Big Andy. Hello and welcome to uh, Talking Music with Big Andy. And uh, this week I'm talking to um, Corgi, the leader of Corgi and the We Are. Uh, hi, how are you doing? Good to see you, Big Andy. I'm coming to you live from the loo, buddy. Well, everyone's got to be some. <laughs> five kids, man. This is my office. <laughs> now, so. I I came across your music by accident, really, uh, kind of like just as I normally do, just sort of like skimming through things on, on Instagram and other places and uh, came across you and I thought, this looks and sounds interesting. What's, what's going on here? And I was really, really impressed by what I heard. Um, now, you haven't been going long. Okay, you started in 2021, is that right? Yeah. Well, actually, I mean, it's a long story. I mean, I actually uh, started writing songs when I was like 15 years old. And uh, I just been, it's been a long journey. But I actually, yeah, about uh, 2021 is when I got serious about, you know, uh, recording and releasing music. Uh, two of my older kids, I have five kids, like I said, but my two older children are both musically inclined. And uh, my son, he's um, he's a, a singer songwriter called Mad Dad. And oh. yeah, Mad Dad. And my daughter just released her first single, um, actually, a couple days after I released um, Miss Delirium. And she released a cover of, uh, I think it's called, called Sally's Song. It's from uh, Nightmare Before Christmas. Uh, yeah. It, yeah. Yeah. It's a real good rendition of that and cool. released it. So uh, the whole family's pretty musically inclined. Why, why did you leave it so long to do anything? Uh, well, I did. I, I didn't. Um, so I got started when I was 15 years old. In fact, uh, one uh, there's another great musician here in Myrtle Beach um, who's my best friend since middle school. His name is Otto Devereaux and the Clown Lounge. You should check them out too. Mm -hmm. um, but Otto um, and I, we were like 15 years old and uh, I'd written this seven song um, album called Pocket Symphonies. And it was like, you know, like typical lover's lament, 15 year old crappy songs, but they actually, they were actually <laughs> pretty good. And my dad um, brought us into the recording studio. And uh, I'm a big Brian Wilson fan, like Beach Boys fan. Yeah. So we like have the, the blue and white striped candy shirts, you know? And we were just doing these songs and uh, I was 14 or 15 and nothing really came of that. You know, this was, um, I was living up in Jersey at the time, young guy, you know, I, I was really into, um, I'm really into a lot of music, but like at that time it was like the eighties, nineties where like doo-wop was making a, a big comeback. Yeah. 
So I, um, some of the stuff had a little bit of that feel to it, you know, throwback sound. So it wasn't really popular music. I mean, then, then Otto and I in high school, we, uh, or in middle school, we had a band called High Tide and we did like all Beach Boys covers and stuff like that. And then, uh, and then in high school, um, I had a band called Newspaper Taxi, you know, the, the little t nod of the hat to the John Lennon and, and the Beatles and Lucy in the Sky. And, uh, so I've been writing all these songs, performing live. I did shows. Uh, I got really big in the folk music in the, um, you know, like 96, 98. So I was doing a lot of folk stuff. I played shows with like Melanie and stuff down in Florida with the Friends of Florida Folk. Oh, really? and, um, just, and then, um, and I did release a, um, a cassette tape back then, you know, uh, <laughs> an album called Pocket, um, called Psychedelic Folk. And you, you're not going to find it anywhere except on eBay. There is a, there's somebody selling uh, the tape cassette on eBay. Um, but it was a really good album. And I'm thinking about releasing that. Um, but I never got any traction with anything. And then and at 17, I become a dad. Right. Okay. Right. So, um, and, I'm, and then I moved to, oh man, I moved to Nashville. I've had a love-hate relationship with music, Andy, <laughs> as a songwriter. And uh, my ego would get bruised and I would just say, screw this. I'm not doing this anymore. I wasn't making money. I had to support a family. So I was, it's just, the timing wasn't right. Yeah. And I moved to Nashville and I mean, that was, that was uh, crazy. That I was just a big, uh, what do they say? Uh, you know, uh, little fish in a big pond in Nashville. Yeah. So I got out of there, moved to Myrtle Beach a couple of years ago. And it was like, boom, all of a sudden the timing was right. right. So, now, Myrtle Beach, that's whereabouts in, in the US is that? I'm in the UK, so I really don't know. Uh, we're in South Carolina. Right. So, and we're right on the beach, man. So every day I'm looking out, I can see you. I always wave, you know, I'm like, oh, there's a big handy right across it, right across the pond, bro. Right, so that's, um, that's the east, east coast, yeah. yeah. Okay, well, without being funny, 2021 was not necessarily a great time to start making music because everything was kind of like closed down, and so it was it was just kind of re reopening, as I, I suppose. But uh, did you find it tough doing it because of all the stuff with lockdown and all that? Well. No, see, what happened was I was living in Tennessee, and I was still writing songs, man. I mean, I have a catalog of probably over 400 tunes. <laughs> I mean, it's got 40 years of songs, man. Um, so a lot of the difficulty I have now is coming up with something fresh and new. Mm. And I do find myself, and I, I have been and will be, like I, I'm, I'm putting out a lot of stuff on Thanksgiving Day here, which is ne next Thursday from when we're recording this. I have the the B side to Miss Delirium, which is a, and it's a song called Mister Weasel, and I wrote that song about 23 years ago. Right. But it just it it fit the bill, you know. Um, uh, I I didn't I, I'm not ready to do an album yet, so yeah. I'm kind of doing what they used to do in the you know, fifties and sixties and A side, B side. And if you and if you look at my first song in twenty twenty one, it's called At the End. It even, you know, we did it up like an old 45. Yeah. yeah. Now, now the B side of that is a song called Monica May, which is coming out December twenty first. Mm -hmm. And if if the plan goes right, you're gonna be getting um probably a single or two a month from me 
for the next 40 years. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah. I, I, I was interested because uh, when I looked, at, looked into trying to find out about the band, not only is there not a lot of information on them, but um, in some places you're, you're described as indie folk rock. And on Spotify, you're described as being a renaissance rock band. So what does it mean? <laughs> what, what did they say? Well, uh, some places it says it's indie folk rock. And on Spotify, it says uh, you're a renaissance rock band. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, so uh, the renaissance rock thing was kind of coined by uh, one of the producers that I work with here in, in Myrtle Beach. Right. Um, and it was kind of like we're trying to figure out what this music is because you know I, we don't know there's so much i'm influenced by so so much stuff over the past you know throughout my lifetime that i'm not really pigeonholed into any any type of thing so yeah. at the end i was trying to draw from like the motown r b type thing um you could kind of sense that i i think um there was a song um uh he was, it's like an old Motown song. I think it's called like, he was really saying something or, right. and it, yeah. I remember, uh, I, uh, this, this, just this Motown song. And uh, I was sitting at the piano and come up with this little thing. And the song just morphed. And I took, you know, I, I had the privilege of working with some great producers and great musicians here at the beach. And, uh, you know, it was just, it was kind of like a throwback sound. We didn't know what to call it. So he, we just said it's it's Renaissance rock. Yeah, yeah. And you see, I mean, I can I can hear influences of like um of of uh, indie rock stuff and folk rock and folk music, but also when I listen to it again, especially, um there is definitely uh, a certain amount of um sort of r and sort of old soul, um, yeah. even jazz to a certain extent that yeah. I can hear in it. Yeah, and surprisingly, I mean, the uh, my stuff, like that song is doing really good. It's, it's you know, like a lot of people, uh, my wife actually um, is an artist too, um, but she does, um, she does crocheting. She said right. on Etsy, okay. and her place is called Poggy's Place. Okay. So, and even people would say she's wife to Poggy and the We Are. And then I always say, you know, I'm the husband to Poggy from Poggy's Place because she has a partner over there in England and a lot of her clients and stuff and people she works with are over there. So I think they're they're get racking the plays up because when they're sitting there crocheting and they're listening to at the end. Yeah. Yeah. And I can see it in the analytics that a lot of people over in the UK are digging them. She's going to get you at the end. Ain't going to show you no compassion. She's going to treat you like a Take her to the picture
Because if you hear the words of that song, I'm using a lot of uh, English terms that Americans don't know what I'm talking about. You know, yeah. um, I'll say, um, you know, here she comes now in knickers soft and red, pale and wanton with a chapeau on her head. She's a dotty. I'm a dodger. In the chamber, there's a shot. She's going to come in. I'm going to see. We're going to give it all we got. I actually wrote that with some of my English friends in mind. Yeah, that's cool, that's cool. I really, I really like that. Uh, I, th I think they're, they're really good songs. They they got, it's interesting because they do have an old feel to them, but they have a new sound, if that makes sense. Yeah, that's what I think that Renaissance, the, the indie folk thing was just a, a moniker that was placed on me by one of the, uh, someone who wrote a review. Right. And then he he would say, he said you know like comparing me comparing you know our sound to bands that I, I mean I'll be honest I've never even heard <laughs> so so the, the band itself I mean the, the the we are is is that just you or is it just a mix of, um, musicians who happen to be around and able to play with you at the time. I could tell you, Big Andy, but then I'd have to kill you. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. No, that's great. So here's the thing. I, uh, I'm I, like I told you, I'm very inspired by Brian Wilson and the Beach Boys. Yeah. You know, sounds the whole nine smile album. So, um, when I when I was younger, I had, you know, different bands and stuff. And when I moved to Nashville, I got wise. So I had a recording studio in the basement. So I said to myself, you know, the band thing's crazy. I'm surrounded by all this talent. The guy who's coming over to paint the garage plays banjo. The guy who's, you know, cleaning the gutters uh, plays steel guitar. So, yeah. hey, you, what are you doing Memorial Day? Come on over for a, and th you know, come on over for a barbecue. Oh, by the way, while you're here, I want you to lay down some stuff. Yeah. And um, so anyway, uh, that's, that's how it, it came about. So I, uh, I did some stuff with, uh, um, I did some stuff and it's, it's free. You can find, you can find it on um, Reverb Nation. It's just some stuff that I did. It's not monetized or anything. Under um, the the United Pickle Band is what it's called. <laughs> so when I was in Nashville, I did some stuff, and I it's just some demos. It's really nothing to write home about, but you might enjoy it, and your listeners may enjoy it. Um, but when I came here, I thought the same thing. I said, I want to put together a group of musicians that's like my wrecking crew yeah, and yeah. I have the most talented musicians on the grand strand we call it the grand strand um guys like Tommy Tipton's played drums for me he's a, a drummer that's phenomenal he's played a lot of the Carolina Opry he played a lot of the Alabama theater just a phenomenal drummer um a guy named Don Colton who plays baritone sax. I mean, uh, alto sax, tenor, you know, uh, some of the professors over at the, the Carolina College are, are playing on my tracks. Cool. And it's just, it, it's, it, it, I like it a lot like that. Yeah, yeah. I, I, it works really well. It, it, it's got a it's an interesting idea because you don't necessarily keep the same sound all the time because of the fact you've got different people playing, doing different things all the yeah. time. But it, it, it makes it sound interesting all the time. Yeah, I, I, that, I enjoy it because everybody, and I love working with new, I mean, I try not to get into a, I won't use the same musicians 
too much. Now, if it comes time to, to throw an album together at that point, the only hamstring that I have is playing out live. Yeah. It's not it for me, but then again, like I said, I, you know, I work a full-time job. I manage a company. I have five kids. There's a lot of stuff going on. So for me to even find time to play out, I'm lucky. I'm lucky to go to the studio four times a month or three times a month. How I'm lucky to go one, one day a month. But that's good too, because it, it, it causes me to focus yeah. so when I get to the studio to make sure everybody does what they need to do yeah, and then get the hell out of there and, and pump it out. So cool. well, that's, that's really cool. Oh, you, you said you got the, you got the new single, Mr. Weasel, or the new track, Mr. Weasel is coming out on Thanksgiving day. And then you've got the uh, the other track, which is the other the B side of at the end, which is coming out in December. Um, Monica May, yeah, great song. I'm telling you, man, this one's this one's gonna. Uh, I uh, my daughter, my uh, the musician I was telling you about. Um, oh, by the way, her, her thing is a uh, funky Gemini. Okay, that's you should check her out. Um, she's over the moon with it. In fact, I didn't I didn't want to send it to her because we have this thing in our family where we have a mania. We'll put a song on and we'll listen to it all day for like seven days straight. So I sent her the finished Monica May and she's like, Dad, I love this song. She's like, I'm going to listen to it. I said, no, nah. I said, delete it. I said, when it comes out, start listening to it, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and she's like, okay, okay. But she said it's great. She said um, it's it has sort of witchy um, undertones. It's um, it, it you'll you'll hear it in the lyrics. You know, one of the lines at the end is, um, you know, circles in the in the sand, stones in her hand. That girl's kicking out some energy. It's about um under undertones of like abuse and uh, uh, a woman's struggle to rise above it and then actually be empowered and she, yeah so my my oldest daughters if she says it's a good tune it's probably a good tune sounds good no, I'm looking, I'm looking forward to it um so you were saying about when you get around to putting an album together. Is that your your plan? Are you are you, are you working towards that? Or with so much material, it's it's almost I think impossible to. I I've, I've tried to look at songs and say, oh, this would go here, or this would go there, but. Right now, it's easier to look at songs and say, oh, that's an A side, that's a B side, you yeah, know, yeah. and just put stuff out and, and and really find something that I think, look, I, I'm, I'm probably, even though I'm, I'm an older guy, you know, I'm still probably finding out things about myself as a, as an artist, as a musician. I'm not a I'm I'm more of a writer and a, a poet. You know that's how I got started doing stuff um, with creative writing and and the songs. In fact, and that's kind of how it all morphed. I would write these things, and then you know uh, the guys in, in the first band were like, "Man, these are good. These could be songs." And I was like, "Okay." So oh, like I was influenced by the Doors. And I have some stuff that is very, um, very doorsy um, that, you know, we, but once again, you know, it's, where's that stuff? I don't think about marketing, no. really. I just think about, I have all these songs and you know what? It could be a legacy for my kids. If I release all this music and maybe, you know, in the future, one gets picked up here or there, or put in a commercial or, or something. Maybe my kids will get a little extra dough when they're, when they're older, man. Yeah, no, um, sure, yes. 
That's, that's cool. So, I mean, you don't have any sort of hard and fast plans about what you're going to release when or anything like that. I'm thinking about starting a, I might just do like a four or five song EP that might be a little bit more acoustic in nature. Um, and I'm, I, I'm going in, let's see, the Wednesday before Thanksgiving, I'm going in uh, to start a new session with, um, at uh, Loud House Audio, which is here in uh, Myrtle Beach. That's one of the studios I, I, I work at. And that was the, that's another thing, like I'm not beholden to any studio. No. You know, it's like the way they used to do it. You know, Wilson would record the vocals over at Gold Star and, you know, record the band over at Capitol. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I don't like having that kind of, I'm, I'm just experimenting, you know, with the sound. Yeah, um, yeah they're, they're, I don't have any major plans unless things start to pick up, you know, and and we get some traction on something or somebody's like, man, we really like that sound. Then I have a whole catalog of, you know, 10 or 12 songs that I say, that's that style. Let's, let's, let's put those together. Yeah, no, I, think it's, 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 I can understand that. I mean, it's, it's, it, it's good. I just, I mean, I like what you've got, right. two tracks and, and I'm looking forward to the, hearing Mr. Weasel and uh, the, the other one. Uh, as soon as they come out, I'm, I just, I don't know. It's it's difficult to explain because of the fact that it's it's not the sort of music that you hear that much, but when you hear it, it feels like you've always known it. Yeah. Oh man, that's the nicest compliment I've ever gotten about my music, man. I appreciate it. It is. Yeah. Really it's, it's, it it reminds me a lot of, of a lot of stuff that I heard in the sixties and that sort of thing, but it also feels oh, like it's right now as well. Yeah, you did an interview with I think it that was the girl band uh, that they changed their name. What are they? The Gems or something? Gems, yeah. Okay, you did an interview with them. Brilliant interview. Um, I like that, and it, and I started like listening to some of their stuff and following on Instagram stuff. In that interview. Um, one of the girls said uh, something about like keeping the music a lot, like that style of music. Yeah, like keeping it going, like to refresh it. I'll, I'll be honest with you, man. I'm thinking about doing um, a cover of a song called Desiree by yeah. the Chunks. Have you ever heard that? I don't know that. No. Dude, are we allowed to play in the bathroom? Yeah, yeah. It's just an old doo-wop song, you know. Uh, the, uh, you know the classic C A minor, and it's uh like do 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 Feel so free and I want to know why do I love you so, my sweet Desiree? Right. Yeah. I mean, I love that stuff. I I do I I love do up I mean it's it's uh, it's 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 one of those things it, I I I was never a Billy Joel fan until he started doing the stuff that, uh, that he did really did things like um the longest time and that sort of thing because that was that was the sort of stuff I want to hear you know that's yeah. what I'm rock and roll with. Dan's favorite song is in the still of the night by the Five Satins yeah and he yeah. would come to me Chris. See, like in the 80s, I wasn't listening to 80s music. You know what I was listening to? The Beatles, Hard Day's Night, Rubber Soul, I mean, yeah. and doo-wop. I was at, I was like 14 years old and I was on the phone with Cousin Brucey. I don't you, I don't know if you guys know, Cousin Brucey was like Wolfman Jack. He's like an American DJ. Yeah. And 
And I was on the phone with him. I'd always call up and he'd be like, he's like, how old are you, kid? And I was like, I'm 12. I'm like, play that song, Neil Skinner Blues by the Fenderman. And he was like, what? Yeah. Was like, we did that song, man. My band in, um, my band down there, we, uh, in, in Florida. You know, that's the thing. We would play all these, couple, like, people were like, you got to play cover songs. I'm like, okay, I'm going to play Neil Skinner Blues by the, and they're like, no, dude, you got to play like, you know, yeah, uh, yeah. Champagne Supernova by Oasis. And I was like, eh, I like Neil Skinner Blues. I'm going to play that one. Or I'm going to do, uh, you know, uh, uh, The Letter by The Box Tops. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't know. But I was like that as a kid, you know, as a young guy. Now, I here's my biggest fear. Like, I don't want to be this like 40 year old dude who's putting out songs that sound like a, they were recorded in his in his bathroom and they're like, you know what I'm saying? Like I want to do I want to try to stay at least a little bit cutting edge. But no, I mean the thing, the thing about it is that there's always a there's always a, a, a market or, or a, an audience for uh, good music and and it it doesn't age necessarily because a lot of the stuff from the 60s lots of people are still playing now lots of people are still listening to now and and it's it gets it gets rehashed even by doing cover people do cover versions of it or they they sample bits of it now and they use that in their songs you know Last and last I checked, uh, I could be wrong, but don't don't the Beatles have a number one hit right now? And they yeah, uh, yeah. John Lennon have gone for fifty years, dude. Yeah, I know. It, it's you know th that music is always going to have a place. Yeah. I think if you do stuff in that style, or all yeah, that reminiscent of it, but you keep it up to date, it's yeah. always going to have an audience. You're always going to have somebody out there who wants to hear it. Comes now with knickers soft and red, hell and wanton with a chapel on her head. She's a dotty, I'm a dodger. In the chamber, there's a shot. She's gonna crawl in, I'm gonna seed. We're gonna give it all we got. Here she comes, here she comes, Mr. Leary. soapbox i'm not i'm not going to preach or anything but i'll tell you one thing man if you look at my my phone my app you know my music and see the the stuff i listen to or all those old bands and doo-wop stuff they were all 98 percent of them were all african americans yeah yeah you know yeah the industry didn't do right by them no and I'll tell you that right now, and it's a damn shame. Um, yeah, I don't know any anyone anyone can like any kind of music and not see the uh, the the African American or the African roots of that music because it's in everything. Oh, totally, man! It's in every. It, it, it's it's amazing. Um, the it's just 
Uh, and I think too, like I actually, you know, uh, there's some people who heard um, at the end and actually thought I was an African American performer. Yeah, well, it's, yeah. Was, I can which see. Was, it was cool because my dad used to tell me that when he first heard the Righteous Brothers in the '60s, he thought they were an African American uh, singing group. The, the the one that I always oh, remember, oh, oh. the one I always remember was the uh, British band. Well, actually, there was Scott from Scotland uh, called the Average White Band, and when they went to America, oh, nobody believed it was them because they all thought they were black. Yeah, <laughs> without all those guys, man, without Bo Diddley, Muddy Waters, Howl the Wolf, I mean, you'd have no Beatles. You'd have, and without the doo wop bands, forget about it. You'd have no Beach Boys. No, you'd have. No, yeah. I mean, Brian Wilson drew a lot of influence from the the four freshmen as far as the vocal stuff goes, but the the doo wop part of it was so instrumental. Yeah. In that. Uh, yeah have no nothing it, th that's the foundation of everything that's been built man and you look at you look at things oh, like the amount of guitarists man. that um cite they cite di different people and that sort of thing but then i mean i, I remember a program where they were there were two guitarists on there were saying about heavily influenced they were by uh by jimmy hendrix mm -hmm. and, that. and then i saw an interview with jimmy hendrix jimmy hendrix said that matt guitar murphy was his one of his heroes yeah you know? yeah absolutely and um what's it what band was hendrix in Oh, he had his, he own, had his own band, but he, he originally was playing with. Um, he, he played with uh, Little Richard for a while. Yeah, and and before that, he did something else too. I have to, man. I I have so much in this brain, man. You know that it's just like, er, but yeah. I gotta remember. I gotta remember. It'll come to me after we're we're done talking. But yeah, I mean, music's just been a part of my life since as long as I can remember, dude. It's coming up on the holiday season. I got this shirt on. My nephew gave this to me. This is um, a tip of the hat, not only to the Beatles, Abbey Road, but to Paul uh, Paul Williams, who wrote the music to a Christmas movie that Jim Henson made called Emmett Otter's Jump Band Christmas. I know it well. Dude, I'm, now I want to read. Do you want an, an album that I would do? I would... I would release some of those songs, man. Yes. And, uh, it used to be, it used to be shown quite often. I haven't seen it for years. Every one of my kids has been raised on that movie. That's why they, they do it. Uh, probably. I mean, every one of my kids thinks Brian, like we probably should hang. I'll tell you the day Brian Wilson passes away. I'll probably, take the whole week off because that man i cannot even explain to you i've i've met him twice um yeah. he's just the auto who i was telling you about my my best buddy who were he still lives here he moved here when i moved here and i actually produced some of his stuff and got him to start recording because he would see me he's like what what are you doing i'm like you need to do this so he, he's he's older than me uh, by a year, and now he's got more stuff out than I do, and I and I'm the one who told him he should release his music. Check him out; you're gonna you, you'll dig him. But anyway, him and I used to go to the pizzeria at our when we were kids, right, with the payphone, and we used to save our lunch money. I, I, this is no joke, Andy, and we used to go to the payphone, and we put the quarters in, we call information and we'd ask for the number for Brian Wilson in Malibu, California, or wherever the hell we thought he lived. And there's a lot of Brian Wilson's in California, man. And we get the phone phone. We'd be like, hey, is this, is this Brian Wilson from the Beach Boys? And they'd be like, no, man, who is this? Well, just two kids from New Jersey because I'm from New Jersey originally. Yeah. And we hang the phone up. Well, we were crazy, man. We we were we loved that whole. We I, loved the man. I was yeah, bummed. Yeah. Jerry Lee Lewis died, the killer. 
he was a big inspiration for me. Um, I don't know, man. All, all of it. It's just so I love talking music with Big Andy. <laughs> Yeah, well, no, it's it, I, I, I mean, it's been a big part of my life since I was a kid. I mean, I, one, of, one of the stories my mum always used to tell me was the fact that uh, they woke up one morning, um, to uh, and they had to come into the to the uh, to our uh, living room, uh, to turn the radio down because I turned the radio right up because I was dancing around the room listening to uh, the Dave Clark Five singing bits and pieces. I love it, man. <laughs> I mean, I know we're focusing on a certain genre, genre, but I mean, I, I, I pretty much love it all. Yeah. The producer mm -hmm. that I work with um, quite frequently is it, um, at Ar Arcadia Studios in Myrtle Beach is Daryl Cherry. He he produces all the hip hop stuff. Myrtle Beach has a huge hip hop. Um, scene right that's just it's just what it is so i'm pretty much there's um but i i record with those guys man in fact i'm i'm gonna be working with an artist called ty c doing a match doing a mashup and otto devereaux that i was telling you about he worked with uh with a uh with an artist a hip-hop artist that did uh put a rap in one of his songs called summer romance right beautiful track and it's just the two worlds coming together and he got a lot of flack for that people said he shouldn't have done it because you know it's not in his style but i mean that's ridiculous man i mean yeah, i'm I just i'm willing to work with any artist any genre i don't care it's the thing I, i've always hated that whole pigeon holding a piece <laughs> Music is beautiful. If it's good music, then you just listen to it. Yeah. It's what kind of stuff have you been listening to recently? Sorry. Oh, I'm not. I don't mean to start doing the interview, but no, 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 I was, no. was going to say, what kind of music? What have you been into recently? Uh, recently, I've been listening to a bit more. Of, uh, I've been listening to a bit of folk music, more uh, sort of more modern folk music. Um, there's a guy that I actually know who goes by the name of Bird Radio, uh, who he uses, he plays the flute, but he uses loop pedals. So he, he kind of plays lines on the flute, and puts it into a loop pedal, and then builds it up and then sings over the top of it. Oh, and man. It's, it's cool. incredible. Um. I've been listening to that, but I've been listening to a bit of a few other stuff actually. I've been listening to sort of like um some more stuff, sort of sixties uh, and seventies stuff lately. Uh, rock rock stuff mainly, but um a few other bits and pieces as well. So what did what did you think of now and then? Um, yeah, I hear you. It, it's okay. But I don't know. For me, it's not. Yeah. It, yeah. It's not quite right somehow. Yeah. I thought, I, I I remember I was like, I felt like, like guilt or something because I wasn't moved. Yeah. Like I, like everybody's like crying. I'm like, I'm just like, eh, it's okay. Yeah. I mean, if I want to cry, I'm going to listen to the, you know, to Hey Jude, <laughs> you know, to the last I mean, I wasn't, wasn't, I wasn't massively interested with Real Love when they did that one. Yeah. I, actually, that's funny. I was playing that one for my kids. My daughter, my youngest daughter, um, she she loves Lennon. And she um, she's only four. And she likes the uh, to watch the YouTube video of um, McCartney Live. I don't know where he was, Glastonbury or something, where where Lennon was on the stage behind them. Yeah, yeah. And he, she, she loves that. Um, that that's something I have been listening to. Uh, I've got really into um, stuff by Sean Lennon. Yeah. Um, there's a band he's in called Ghost of a Sabretooth Tiger. 
I just saw some of their stuff on Instagram. They're fantastic. Yeah. They are fantastic. And the other one, the other one he does is the uh, the um, oh god, it's the one of the guys from Primus. Oh, uh, it's, it's the Claypool Lemon Lennon Delirium. Okay, they're fantastic. He, he's just got such a great voice, and the sound is amazing. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I'll have to look into that. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you very much for being on the show. I'll, I'll definitely put links up for your socials and for the uh, YouTube channels and that sort of thing. Um, everybody out there, keep an eye out for uh, Porgy and the We Are and uh, listen to their music and uh, listen to them. They're on Spotify, they're on YouTube and wherever else you can find them. Just look it up and uh, and uh, keep them going. Keep, keep it... Uh, Keep it in the uh, uh, and pass it round. Pass people the, the music round to people. Let them know it's there. Yeah, we appreciate it. No problem at all. Thank you for being on the show. It was great talking with you, Big Andy. Let's stay in touch, buddy. Definitely. Thank you very much to everybody. <laughs> See you later. Bye. <laughs>